Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, and this is Dadvice TV Live. And boy, we've got a lot of people watching both on Facebook and YouTube, and that is fantastic. And I would love to encourage you guys to share these broadcasts with other people so they can find this great information to help them kick kidney disease to the curb. Now today, we're gonna talk about something pretty cool meat substitutes but in case you are brand new let me first tell you a little short bit about myself i get long-winded i'm going to try not to be long-winded this time but i was diagnosed ooh, almost two years ago november 16th um, with stage five kidney failure oh it was awful it was bad and the doctor she pretty much told me i had to go on dialysis she wanted me on dialysis now and eventually get a transplant. But I'm a super nerd, and I started doing some research. I was like, this can't be the only option for me. And I discovered that there are people who are improving their kidney health. They're not fixing or repairing your kidneys. You can't do that. But they are delaying or avoiding the need for dialysis by making lifestyle and diet changes. And actually, it's not even really diet changes. It just comes down to understanding some nutrition. Now today, less than two years later, I've got tons of energy. I have zero symptoms, not a one. No anemia, no blurriness, none of that weakness, that tiredness, the upset stomach, the constant headache, the taste of, of metal in mouth, the unable to sleep at night, the restless legs, all those problems, gone, gone, gone. Not a one, and my GFR is in the 30s. I am now stage three but not having symptoms is the most important thing to me and having tons of energy. I am living life, I am loving life. And there's no magic pills, nothing like that. No magic mixing up stuff, nothing like that. It's simple choices by understanding nutrition. Now, how the heck did I learn about nutrition? Well, I used the secret weapon for kidney patients. You guys know what it is. Tell me in the comments, what is the secret weapon? The most important thing, in my opinion, for kidney patients, who I consider the people that I think are the heroes when it comes to improving your kidney health and your overall health. The people who help you um, avoid dialysis or at least slow down that kidney decline, put the brakes on and delay the need for dialysis or even a transplant. Who am I talking about? I'm looking in the comments. Oh, I see lots of people from all over the place. Yes, Chris, renal dietitians. And you guys know who's with us? It's Tuesday. We got Jen Hernandez, a renal dietitian right here with us. Hey, Jen, go ahead and let the people who are new know about you. Thanks, James. So my name is Jen and I am a registered dietitian. I'm also board certified in renal nutrition, and I've been working with people in all stages of kidney issues from very, very beginning to just some kidney stones, but all the way to the very end and in dialysis. So I love helping people really avoid dialysis. So just like James' condition, I really take pride in helping people in stages two, three, four, even five avoid being on dialysis by making healthy, smart, and safe nutrition changes. So that is my passion. It is what I do for uh, every day, helping my clients. And I do that with private coaching for people who live in the United States. And then I also have a course, a program that is available for United States and internationally that gives a lot of the framework that I use with private clients on how to make changes with their nutrition for better kidney health. So it's a little bit about me, and I'm really, really looking forward to today's uh, conversation. I did pull up, we were just talking before about being live on Facebook. <laughs> I pulled up my side of the Facebook Live, so I'm sharing it on my Facebook page. And I've already told some people on there, bear with me if I'm trying to multitask. James is great at multitasking with this stuff. I am fresh out of the gate. So let's see how I can do with uh, answering some of the comments that get posted here, but then also talking about our conversation for today. 
I'll tell you, my secret to multitasking is letting other people talk so that then I can go through the comments and click on all the buttons I need. <laughs> There's no magic skill. <laughs> it looks like I'm multitasking, but I'm just letting somebody else take some of the work so I can do something else. <laughs> oh, I bet if we turned around and if the camera was facing the other way at your computer, I'm sure there'd be just like, I, I have vision like a wall of screens. I know you showed me some of it. But it like, is a, it is a gigantic <laughs> screen. It's a little too big because I have to turn my head so much <laughs> to look at it. <laughs> and, and just as a kind of like behind the scenes thing, um, I, I purposely always put Jen on the left, my left, on the screen up there so that when I'm looking at my monitor to click on things, it kind of looks like I'm looking over towards her. <laughs> so I should do, let's see. Like this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, everybody. Our topic today is meat substitutes, those artificial meats, the the meat wannabes, all sorts of names for them. We're going to talk about those and um, a renal diet. Is this something that you guys can fit into your renal diet? As you know, almost anything, as long as you know the, the things you got to watch out for and what's in it, you can make fit in your diet. But sometimes, well, some things just aren't worth making fit because maybe they eat up too much of the allowances, how much sodium you're allowed to have per day, and how much uh, protein or phosphorus or potassium. And I think this is one of those areas where these meat substitutes you got to keep an eye out for because I've tried to squeeze some in and there are a few that I use. And there are some that when I see it, I'm just like, whoa, blown away when I look at it. So uh, we we don't have a blog post to follow, <laughs> Jen and I. Usually Jen writes a blog post and I get access to it right before the show. <laughs> and it helps me kind of prepare. Yeah, this one, no, this one was kind of a, I, get, I just get a lot of questions about meat substitutes and people talk about them all the time. And I felt like it's just been asked so many times that it's definitely a conversation that needs to yep. be had. So uh, here's a few questions I do have, and then we'll let other people, if you have questions that are related to meat substitutes, feel free to ask those. Now, just to, so that everyone knows, if you ask a question like, hey, my GFR is 37 or my creatinine is 2.72, chances are we cannot answer that question. Specific questions or specific nutritional questions or uh, treatment questions, those are best for your own renal dietitian, your doctor, your healthcare team, because they know everything about you. So what we're providing when we answer questions are more of the general things, you know, how do, can I do this? Should I do that? Just so you guys know. And if you can put a cue in front of your question, that way it's easier for me to spot them when I am scrolling through here. And now that we have all the comments from all the Facebook channels and YouTube, I have lots of stuff on my screen to look at. <laughs> so those cues really make it helpful for me to find those questions. But I have a couple of them I want to start off with. Um, well, let's let's go, let's jump right on in. Are is this something we should be worried about when we see meat substitute, or is it something that we there are some that can fit? Because you know, what's the general uh, consensus? on meat substitutes when it comes to a renal diet? I put meat substitutes in a caution category. And this is really because it's not something that I would recommend having day to day, uh, especially like not meal to meal. And the concern about that is, is when I talk with my clients, when I focus on making nutrition changes with them, we really focus on plants. So I have my whole program, my Facebook mm -hmm. group, all of that is plant powered kidneys. And the goal of that is to really shift the base of your nutrition to a plant based diet. Now, there can be options for including animal products of varying types. It really is individualized at that point. My concern with something like a meat substitute is their marketing as plant based, which <laughs> Technically, they are, but it's still 
a highly processed food. And because it's highly processed, it's oftentimes higher in sodium. There's often always, uh, often always, there's often phosphorus and possibly potassium additives that are also in those ingredients or in those types of foods. And that can be really uh, problematic for people with kidney issues. If you have problems struggling with your phosphorus, if you have problems struggling with your potassium, if you have problems struggling with your blood pressure and your sodium and your fluids, a meat substitute is not necessarily going to be something that can be incorporated all the time. Again, it's not that you can't have them. It's something that it's really for an every now and then kind of treat. And another factor that we need to consider too is that oftentimes when companies are making something like a meat substitute, a plant-based, I keep wanting to do this, a plant-based substitute, (laughs) it's, they're going to try to make it comparable oftentimes even in, in the nutritional side. And we we as Americans are always thinking protein, protein, protein. Where's mm-hmm. the protein then? Where's the protein coming from? I even have clients that are saying, am I not getting enough protein now if I'm eating more plants? And you get plenty of protein. I promise you there is protein in plants. There, If, if, if a plant-based fully vegan diet was so uh, malnourishing, vegans all over the place would be in a lot more trouble, right? It would not yep. be as prevalent. Yeah. And I so, have I have relatives that are that are uh, vegetarian, perhaps vegan. Uh, they're not malnourished. They're healthy. They're active. They're participating in sports. They don't have problems. They're super healthy. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely not a shortage of protein in their diet. Yeah, exactly. And what worries me is that some people who have kidney issues need to restrict on their protein. They need to be careful with how much they're having. So if you're relying more on something like a meat substitute, then you could be taking in even more protein than you need. And that can be really hard on the kidneys, even coming from a plant-based source or sometimes these plant-based products, they're adding in additional like protein powders, whey powders, things like that, because whether or not they want to be labeled as vegan or whole food or whatever the case is, they're still trying to say, hey, this is a plant-based burger, but it still gives you, you know, 25 grams of protein. That's a lot of protein. Yeah, especially I mean, for kidney patients. If you're stage yeah. four or five, that's that's a big portion of your daily mm-hmm. allotment, which we have someone asking, you know, how much protein should you be limited to? It's going to vary from person to person. It's going to depend on so many different factors, not just what your GFR is. They're going to look at a number of things and your doctor will set the limit for you. Um, when I was first diagnosed, my limit, now my I was stage five kidney failure. Um, boy, if I can remember what it was, I want to say it was 50 to 60 grams, somewhere around there, I believe. Um, and and I had heart issues. I you know, My potassium was allowed a lot more. They wanted me to eat potassium. Um, And then my protein, Mm -hmm. I've slowly increased it a little bit, but I probably stay myself and I'm not very active. Um, You know, I don't run or exercise majorly. I just do walking and stuff. I probably stick in the 60 to 80 maybe range myself. But for each of you, it's going to depend on your doctor. So always check with your doctor. Don't use a formula Mm -hmm. on the internet. Don't use what somebody on Facebook said. We talked about that last week. (laughs) Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, I mean, I will say that as a dietitian, I also provide protein guidelines for people. Um, And what I can say, and this is, again, this is a generalized idea, but uh, standard typical protein recommendations are 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. And for kidney issues, oftentimes it can be a little bit below that, but that's really where it comes into the individualization Mm -hmm. and other health conditions, other health uh, comorbidities, age, activity level. There's tons of other factors related, but if you want to get an idea of at least maybe where to start or um, to see what, where you're kind of at when it comes to just general standard protein needs, you can try that and see what it's looking like because oftentimes people are eating more, definitely Mm -hmm. eating more than what they really need from their diet. 
Well, and it seems like everything is packed with protein. You, you, all the little bars, all the cereals anymore. It's yeah. like they're bragging about it. Like who can get the most protein in a spoonful of something? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's kind of shocking. Now you mentioned about how a lot of these artificial meat companies are trying to replicate, I'm going to use that word, um, the real thing. So, you know, you guys have all seen the Burger King commercials for the Impossible Burger. And in those commercials, those people are taking a big old bite of this plant-based alternative burger, and they're claiming they can't even tell it's different. Uh, I do know it is packed full of sodium, more sodium than in the unhealthy Whopper. And I'll tell you guys, I tried one of those burgers. I went and I got one. And I cut it up so that I could only have a little bit. Oh, that thing tasted awful. Mm -hmm. um, as a replacement for the Whopper. My expectations were set at what I remember a Whopper tasting like. And when I got that, it was just pure disappointment. Um, and then just knowing how unhealthy that is, even though it's plant-based, um, uh, it was so disappointing. And it's just... Mm -hmm. It's so processed. You don't you don't realize that they're hiding that that it's so processed behind the plant based. It's plant based. It's plant based, and we all I think consumers and kidney patients we assume plant based automatically means good, healthy, right. better for us, and that's it's not true. Um, right. One brand of plant based products I've used and a number of people here have used. There's been a few questions about those. Is the corn. Uh, Q-U-O-R-N, and I don't know if I'm yep. pronouncing it wrong. I am so sorry to their brand if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I absolutely love their little fake nuggets. I love their spicy chicken patty. It was very helpful for me transitioning from being a very heavy meat eater to being very, very plant-based. Um, and, and let me tell a little story real quick. Um, I, I couldn't just give up everything so easy. It was very, very hard. And I had a craving for McDonald's. I, I lived off of the McDonald's drive through window. Breakfast, little bur breakfast burritos, a few of them. They're a buck each. Get four of them. Boom, boom, boom. You eat it. Yeah, you're gaining a ton of weight. <laughs> it's an American diet. <laughs> Lunch. There was one right across, walking distance outside my office, right across the street. I could throw a football and hit it. Um, and just hitting them with the kids when we're out and about. But I, I craved McDonald's so bad. And the corn, spicy chicken patties, I would take those, uh, use some bread, put those on there. I put some vegan mayo. I'd use a little bit of chopped up cabbage for crunch. And that thing, to my mind, tasted exactly like a McDonald's McChicken. And it allowed me to use it as a crutch to get past that craving for McDonald's because I could have one mm -hmm. of those and it just, oh, I swear it tasted just like McDonald's or does taste just like McDonald's. And every so often I still make those. But what are, do you know anything about that brand or what are your thoughts on that brand? Um, I have personally not used it. Uh, I, you know, we've probably talked about this before, but being on the island, I don't have as many package or as many product options out here. Uh, I have looked it up before. I've had other people ask me about it. And I think overall it looks okay. Um, I'm pulling up the ingredients and the information for it right now. And I mean, one thing that really does stand out to me is that, and they do a good job of highlighting it, is that it does contain wheat in it. So if you have a gluten issue, if you have any kind of inflammatory response to wheat, which some people, especially with those with autoimmune situations related to their kidney health, uh, that might trigger inflammation. And we've talked about tracking that before um, in, in the labs, how you would look at that there. So that's something to keep in mind that the wheat and gluten may be inflammatory. Uh, I like looking at it that it doesn't have any added potassium or phosphate additives. Yeah, uh, It has plenty of additives. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind. But the sodium, sodium is always going to be an issue to me. 
Uh, you know, if we think in this example here, I'm looking at the spicy patty. Yep. And it's 230 milligrams of sodium. And if you were to have that with a bun, which the buns are usually about two to 400 milligrams of sodium. Um, so that's going to put the, the, just the burger or the, the patty, the patty and, and the, bun. the bun at about 500 milligrams or so. Again, not terrible, but mm-hmm. are you going to have it plain or what are you going to add to it? And you got to think about how these things kind of all stack and add up yeah. together. Um, I definitely like the idea that you said, James, about how you use this as an alternative for McDonald's drive through because obviously if you were to say, well, I'm not going to have the, the plant-based patty, I might as, I'm might i just going to go to McDonald's and get it, you, you made the better choice there from, from my perspective in having something that is lower in sodium and likely much lower in protein, so probably safer for you. So... I don't want to completely shun away from these kind of products. And this is where I say, like, this is a point where it could be something that fits into the diet. Because mm-hmm. if you're going to say, well, it's either this or I go to McDonald's, then, yeah, this is going to be a better option. And that's pretty much how I used it. It wasn't, you know, every meal wasn't these. And that's an important thing is, remember, we got to need we need variety in our diet. we got to keep mm-hmm. changing things up so we don't get tired. And our, there's so many things that we need. And we, it's good to get them from different sources. I use it as that that craving for that McDonald's drive-through because it's so easy. It's just like having snacks laying around the house. If mm-hmm. you see them, it's easy to pick one up and just ah, just so I'll just have one of the kids' cookies. Oh, and I have one more. All of a sudden, the kids are like, Dad, where'd all my cookies go? And like, I don't know. I only ate a couple. Wait, I guess I ate them all. But, uh, you know, driving around, there's that McDonald's, those big old golden arches glowing, going, woo, woo, James, come on. And yeah. um, it, it was my my crutch, and it helped, um, but I did not rely on those completely. Now, one thing I did like about that company, I love calling companies, everybody. It's a good tip for you. They will send you coupons for free stuff. You just call and ask them, and they send those out so you can try it. Uh, and see if you like it. And they were very good at that because I, I was trying to figure out what I could eat, looking for stuff that, I, you know, in the beginning it was plant-based, boom, I'm, go, I'm on it. Is it low sodium? Is it low phosphorus, low potassium? Those were kind of my, my guidelines in the beginning. And they would send me a coupon. I'd call them up and say, hey, I want to try, I saw this at the store. Can I try it? Can you send me a coupon? Boom, get a packet or an envelope in the mail a week later with a bunch of coupons. So if anyone is thinking of trying it, maybe you can work it into your diet, never hesitate to call their customer service to see if they got some coupons for Yeah, free and they food. have them online too, on their website. Right in the top right corner, there's a contact and a coupon button. So awesome. you can print coupons directly from their website. Perfect. Now, someone had mentioned that they heard, and this could just be uh, an internet rumor, and I don't know if you would know the answer to this, but... They said their doctor mentioned that some of the chemicals in there could possibly be cancerous. Um, do you see anything that stands out to you? I could not imagine that in the United States we would be selling food. Yeah, that um, sounds like a little bit more of a scare tactic. And if that's the case, and, and especially a doctor saying, giving kind of scary nutrition information like that, my favorite question is why? You know, Mm -hmm. why, why, or or in this case, maybe it's, what are you talking about? So don't let them just give a blanket statement of something and say, basically telling you all of this food is dangerous and can cause cancer. And it's like, well, wait a minute, what fruit are you talking about? What chemical, what, what specific ingredient are you talking about? Please show me exactly. Because if they give something like that, that's again, a situation that just creates a lot of food fear and anxiety and stress over eating. And that's not going to help anybody. Right. You know, even today we're talking about using meat substitutes and I'm saying it's not my favorite thing, but I'm not saying don't have them at all. I'm just Mm -hmm. saying, be careful with them and don't rely on them. Um, I'm not saying anything causes cancer for (laughs) for this stuff. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I would be really, really curious to find out more details about where this information is coming from, mm-hmm. or is the doctor even looking up to Dr. Google for this information? Like, where are they getting this information from? Yeah. Now, when when you work with with uh, kidney patients, 
Uh, what are some tips that you give them where they do use meat substitutes? Or are there situations where you know you recommend them, such as for me to get over that crutch of that drive through window, boy, it looked really good for a long time. Now I could not imagine going to McDonald's. <laughs> Yeah. So for my clients that, and I've had some that are pretty, um, I, I wouldn't say focused on the meat substitutes. Uh, we talk about how to cut down on using those and saying, okay, let's just have those maybe three times a week. You know, we'll find about where they're typically eating them or how much they're typically having them and work on yep. cutting them down a little bit but also working on adding more of the whole foods that we're looking at. So when you do have that patty, make sure you add a ton of lettuce, you add some onion, tomato, you really stack on more plants into that meal so that it's really, really satisfying. I mean, even if you look at the, um, again, I'm going to kind of reference the, the corn website, mm -hmm. you look up some of their products and right away they have a portion of their product but then it's surrounded by all these whole foods. So even in their own marketing, they're showing that this is something that is part of a plate, part of a meal. This is not intended to be the meal. Uh, even some like some of the little appetizers and things they have, they show it with greens, they show it with veggies, they show that there's other components to the meal. So I talk with my clients about how to make sure that they're including other components that are still um, that are still real whole plant-based foods yep. in tandem with using these. And um, we do work on kind of weaning away, but I do like the idea of using something like this as an alternative to that McDonald's drive through Yeah, and and when I make my meals now, I have, it's it's amazing. I, I, I lived off the drive through Everything mm -hmm. got ordered either from a teenager behind a cash register or through a speaker. That was my cooking in the back in the day. Uh, now I love making the food. I love eating as, as whole food as possible. Uh, just, I, I feel so much better. And not only is it better, do I feel better? My kidneys are doing better. They love it. They're so happy with all that stuff. The less processing and more nutrients and all that. Mm -hmm. We have a, a we had a few people ask about tofu, and um, I, I I'm gonna guess tempeh. I, yeah, I have no tempeh. Clue how to pronounce. Okay, I have no clue how to pronounce that. <laughs> Are those considered <laughs> processed? Because tofu is based on soy, or is that not considered processed? I mean, this is a, a really honestly kind of a subjective question. So what do you define as processed? I think if we look at it in the most technical aspect, then yes, it would be considered a processed food because the soy plant has gone through processing to create the tofu. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the ingredients, when you look at what's actually in there, how much processing has gone through with it, right? So yep. we're looking at something like tofu that has the soy and water and a binder, like a, a calcium usually. Um, or we look at it compared to a plant-based burger that has Ooh. pea protein and potato starch and beans and uh, I, I, you know, just tons and tons of, of other stuff. things. Exactly. They took a lot of different components and they kind of processed them all together. They created this product. Whereas with a, a soy base, they just, you know, fermented it, changed the processing of it. They used the same thing. It's like saying applesauce mm -hmm. is processed apples. It's that kind of concept that yep. it's, they're taking a whole food and they're just changing the way that we're having it. I, for one, I'm a huge fan of tofu. Tempeh, I'm a little kind of like, Meh, it's not my favorite. I'll have it from time to time. I, I, I don't think I've experimented enough with it. Um, I've never tempeh had tempeh. Is, is it is, it's soy based? It is soy based, yes. Okay. And it's fermented too. So we talk about getting things like Ooh, pre and probiotics. Gut. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so tempeh is really great for that. Um, one of the tricks that I've learned in, in making tempeh is boiling it for just a few minutes when you first take it out of the package, and it helps cut down some of the bitterness that some people associate with tempeh. And it's a very, very sturdy protein, 
So you can cube it and then you could like put it on a skewer for a kebab. You mm. could grill chunks of it. You could put it in a stir fry and it really holds pretty well together compared to tofu that, you know, is very soft and spongy. Um, yep. And if you mess with it too much, it can break apart pretty easily. But tempeh is very, very firm. So it can hold up to a little more uh, heavier uh, cooking methods. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Now for me, and someone asked, is soy good or bad? Um, for me, so most people, soy is, it's good. It's easy for them to work into their diet. Um, for me, believe it or not, and I loved snacking on edamame. Oh my goodness. I could just sit there and watch a movie and, uh, uh, this is before kidney disease, big old thing, edamame and a bunch of salt. <laughs> no, not good. Not good. But I learned after being diagnosed with kidney failure that I have an allergy to soy. I don't break out in hives or anything, but I do get some inflammation and it is not helpful for my kidneys. So in a lot of my older videos, I talk about how that I avoid soy and I never explained it. So some people think, ooh, is soy bad? No, no, no. Um, your thoughts on soy? Okay. I think I think it's great. I have a lot of clients that use soy and tofu. I've done cooking demonstrations before about how to prepare tofu and how to use it in cooking. I love tofu. I used to hate it when I first tried it in high school. I had a very um, old dried out stir fry that had tofu and it just gave me a really bad first impression. But luckily I went back to it and I got to learn how to make it more on my own and I love it. It is so good. So I think tofu is a great alternative. Again, you still want to keep in mind how much protein you really need for the day. It's not something that you want to have a high abundance of. Um, but when we're talking about a plant-based diet, including something like tofu or tempeh in there is a great option to get some of your protein in. Yep. And, um, Speaking of earlier, we're talking about sodium. I'm kind of trying to catch up on some of the questions in here. We've got lots of activity, which is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. Broadcast to Facebook opened up so many more people that can now participate in the live questions. Yeah. Um, are there any plant-based meat substitutes that you can think of that are considered low in sodium? Where it's, um. you know, you know what? I was researching some a while ago, mm -hmm. and I'll need to pull up what that was because um, I was actually going to create a post comparing, I think, like four to six different types of plant-based burgers. So I'll need to pull it up and find more of those details, but I know that there are some good amounts. And honestly, um, you know, everybody, we all have different grocery stores. We all have different availability of products. So what it really comes down to is that you want to spend some time, pick a time where you can go to the grocery store, your favorite store, and that you're not going to feel rushed. You're not going to feel pressured. You don't have to hurry home and cook, or you don't have to go run more errands. Pick a time where you can really, really just hang out in the freezer section and go through the labels and look, grab a few different products. Take a look to see what they have and look for the ones. My recommendation is the lowest that is in um, sodium for one, but then also making sure there's, you know, the protein isn't crazy high. If they're promoting super high protein, like 20 plus grams, oh. it, it's just not necessary. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you're looking at some different products, look for ones that are really just actually made from plants. Okay. And, Another thought too is if, uh, if you're feeling really adventurous in the kitchen, you can make your own plant-based patties. So they're really, really Ooh. easy to make and there's tons of different options. And I know I'm going to be putting up some different recipe ideas soon for those. Yeah. Oh, that would be helpful. So, and I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to plug your, your, your Facebook page real quick. If you guys have not joined plant powered kidneys, which is Jen's private Facebook group. You can go there. You can join, just answer some questions. She keeps it private that way. You know, not everyone wants everybody to know they have kidney problems and talk about stuff out in public. So it's great to have that community there, but she does videos. I think it's once a week, sometimes more. Is it? Um, I'm, I'm, tr I aim for once a week. I can't do it yep. every single week. Like for example, I can't do this week, but, um, usually Thursdays at this time yep. I go live for about 15 minutes or so for just a little quick cooking demo or a quick, just kind of, uh, 
maybe uh, discussing a topic, a thread that's come up in the Facebook group. I mean, it's a really awesome group. And I feel like I go on the lives and I just tell everybody, thank you. And I'm so happy to see everybody being so supportive. Um, we, I do make it private also, not only for privacy of, of kidney health issues, but um, really just to make sure that all everything that's shared and put in there is not put out into just, you know, people can't just go in and, and um, be nosy, really. Yep. And I do require that the questions be responded to for asking to join. So if people, if you don't answer the questions, then you'll likely get declined from the group. So that's another thing is I just want to make sure that real people are joining. They're not bots. And almost all the time we get rid of people, but the group is really great. And they'll tell me, they'll report to me if, if somebody is posting something inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And then that's, I delete it and I kick them out and I say, sorry, you don't take advantage of my people here. This yep. is not the place. Yeah. And there's so many of those, you know, spam bots or people trying to sell something and they've got mm -hmm. something that it's just not going to help us. It could actually even hurt us. But I, if you do not belong, go join it. Plant powered kidneys. Lots of cooking stuff. If I remember right, last week was hummus. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know where the heck you got those lemons from with all that juice in them. Oh, I, yeah. I, I would need like three lemons to get the juice you had out of half of one. Oh, yeah. I stopped at half and I was like, I think this is funny. So, But it's great watching you cook and seeing how you prepare the foods and stuff because I'm not a, a cooking person. Um, mm -hmm. those of you that know me, I have one meal stir fry. I'm going to, I'm going to expand sometime soon, maybe come winter ish, uh, especially with all this stay at home stuff. I need to start expanding. Um, but join her Facebook group. There's lots of great recipes and how to do stuff. And oh, he has people saying, I love hummus. Yes. Hummus is great. Um, mm -hmm. we've had a few questions. Let me scroll back through here. Roslyn that are kind of related to what we're talking about about protein. Um, Rosalind's asked a number of questions about switching to a, a plant-based protein diet and kind of comparing animal protein to plant protein. Can you kind of talk about that and, and why it's, at least for me and every dietitian I've spoken to, going to a plant-based diet is better for kidney patients? Well, there's a lot of factors related to not even just the protein component of the animal product, but we're looking at other factors as well. So we think of animal proteins, oftentimes things that are associated with that include saturated fat, cholesterol, and sodium in there too. And these are all things that we encourage should be avoided. Compared to plant-based proteins, these proteins include uh, nutrition and uh, nutrients that we're encouraging more of. So for example, a plant-based protein would, could be something like beans. And with beans, you get fiber, you get B vitamins, you get micronutrients, you get a ton of other added benefits from those proteins. So we're looking at likely comparable amounts, 20 grams for, for plants, 20 grams for animals, but we're looking at more benefits from the plant proteins and that we're not having the saturated fat, the cholesterol, the um, oftentimes processed things or the types of fats that come from animal products that we're all talking about basically avoiding or being careful of. Uh, one, of the, um, one of the things I would say related to animal proteins that you might miss out on would be the iron, but there are plant-based sources of iron. Okay, it's very much out there. You get them in greens, and it also has to do with the absorption, too. So I know people worry about that related to animal proteins, but once again, a plant-based diet is not going to leave you with a bunch of nutritional gaps. Mm -hmm. So it, that is not necessarily a concern. We're looking at benefits of all the stuff that you do get from the plant-based proteins. Uh, and, and oftentimes it's just a little more because you're giving your body more of that nutrition, you're giving your body more of those benefits that really helps support the kidney health. So it's really, really great to transition towards a plant-based diet. And somebody in, in my Facebook, uh, party here had asked about how to make that transition in cutting away from some more of those 
animal proteins and doing more plant-based. And really it can just come down to the serving sizes. Start to cut yourself, wean yourself down in the portion of your animal protein and increase the plant-based side. So I don't want you, I don't want any of you to be focusing just on what to avoid. I want you to focus on what to eat, what to include on your diet, what to put on your plate so that you feel full and satisfied and you enjoy your meal. So if you're cutting down on animal protein, that's really, really great. But what are you putting on your plate? Can you add some more greens? Can you add another, a side salad? Can you do some more roasted vegetables? Can you add some brown rice or some quinoa? Can you put something else in there that is going to help you enjoy your meal even more and not focus on what is getting taken away? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because ultimately we do want you to feel better and focusing on more plants in your diet. I'm telling you, it will help you feel better. It really, really will. Yeah. And when I first was diagnosed, my doctors encouraged me. Um, I, I, some people say, James, you got lucky. You found good dietitians, good doctors. And I do agree with that 100% because I know not many doctors will focus on diet and nutrition and mine. That's the first thing was that. And then exercise and stress management, boom, 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 have to be on top of those. But, um, darn it. I forgot where I was going to go with this. (laughs) Well, okay, about your doctor supporting your decisions. To the focus diet, on yeah, I went, I went um, with the plant based. Darn it, I can't remember. Oh, oh, I remember what. Um, and I, I was like, I always ask why, 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 and usually whatever they say to that, I ask, hmm, why? <laughs> and yep. I keep diving deeper and deeper and deeper, like a little kid. And mm-hmm. I remember in the beginning, the concerns were. The animal protein could cause additional inflammation with my kidneys. And I already had some inflammation. I had quite a bit of inflammation and I was leaking a lot of protein. So they wanted me to go to a plant-based diet because that has the potential to reduce inflammation, which could reduce leaking protein. I no longer leak any protein. Uh, So that theory worked with me. And the other one was something about the pH balance of your blood. I don't know. It goes one way or the other with animal protein, but it doesn't do mm-hmm. that with plant-based protein. And it, you know, those two things, I just, whenever I wanted, you know, I, I, I cheated a few times, like last December, feels like a lifetime ago now. I did have a couple of ribeye steaks that month. Uh, but whenever I started wanting something like, oh, I really want that big, thick ribeye. Um, I would think about, no, 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 it's not good. It's just, it's gonna, I'll find something else. And I got to where mixing things up, uh, trying different things. You know, I mainly eat, I do eat a lot of salads, eat a lot of stir fry, uh, but the flavors by mixing things in, mm-hmm. boom, it's great. Today at lunch, I made a salad. I wish, I gotta start like videotaping me making these. I was just randomly putting stuff together. Uh, had some sunflower seeds and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to make up my own dressing. And I used some, it was pretty much a lemon-based dressing with some other stuff and some poppy seeds. It was incredible. <laughs> I'll never be able to duplicate it again. Um, like a mad science, you know, in there mixing things up. But I just, I've gotten to where, you know, going from being someone who the only vegetables or plants I got if you didn't count French fries, (laughs) was whatever the topping was on the burger or Mm -hmm. toppings on a pizza, it used to be it. Now, I have no problem, it's been really easy working it in. Um, And I know going plant-based was a gigantic, huge part of being able to improve my health, reduce and eliminate my symptoms. So anyone out there who's on the fence, should I go plant-based or not? Um, I started seeing results extremely fast. Within, you know, I would say within a week, um, I started noticing things were better. And back then I was getting my labs every week and I started seeing them grow, moving up. Things, you know, my GFR made out a jump, but I saw my creatinine going down. I saw my BUN going down. I saw things improving and that helped me stick with it. And now I could not imagine not eating a balanced meal with lots of plant-based stuff and veggies um, or grabbing an apple. Mm -hmm. Oh, I absolutely love apples 
And I, the only time I ate them before was when they were dipped in caramel. <laughs> And they came on a stick at the fair. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, that's a really great point that you made that you had that kind of that uphill challenge, that work that was revolved of just resetting your, your own internal preferences. And I talk with a lot of my clients about that when they start off and they say, I'm not really a vegetable person. Um, I mean, I've had clients who have been the same boat, like my, the only vegetable I'll eat is a potato or something like that. And we just start to gradually find the vegetables that they can enjoy that they're willing to try. And we talk about different ways to make them. And that can really make a huge difference in your preference. Like if you don't like cauliflower, maybe it's that you don't like raw cauliflower, but you love roasted cauliflower. You know, it's all about different preferences and the spices that you use. Um, And then I also, before I forget, I wanted to jump back into what you were talking about, the acid Uh balance. That's another really big factor when it comes to the different proteins. The animal proteins are more alkaline and the plant, or I'm sorry, the animal proteins are more acidic and the plant proteins are more alkaline. So with kidney issues, the body tends to lean towards an acidic state. And by eating more plants, you're helping to offset this transition that's this push into the acid range so eating more plants and a more alkaline diet can be helpful in that case as well so that's another reason to be focusing on more plants in the diet um before anybody asks i'm sure it'll be a question that comes up is the alkaline waters I'm not crazy about them not a fan of them i'm talking about whole that comes still. up every week Every time. Um, Again, just think about what we're talking about. We're talking about whole, real foods, okay? So plants, and then there's plant-based products. There's plants for the alkaline, and then there's alkaline water. So I I really don't want you all to rely on products. I don't want your grocery cart, when you're going to check out, I don't want you to look down and see boxes and bags and packages of food. I, I mean, yes, it's fine to have these things in there, but if that's your whole cart, that is not following a whole food plant-based diet. That is still a processed diet. And there's changes that can be made to really help protect your kidneys mm-hmm. from that point. They, you could be making good steps in the right direction, but think about really focusing on whole foods. What can you put in your diet? What more can you eat that is from a whole food? Yeah. And when I first was diagnosed, I remember my doctor, he gave me so much great advice. And one day I'm going to interview him, get him on here. Um, Right now he's busy with all the school openings and trying to help them with all that stuff. Um, But my doctor told me when I go grocery shopping, try to spend most of my time on the outside, which is the fresh, less processed stuff, less time in the middle. He called that the danger zone inside the, the, uh, the supermarkets, that's all the processed stuff, the boxes, the, the things that you could buy that you can have in your pantry for two years and then bring it out and t- somehow turn it into something that you can eat. It's like, avoid those, James, right now. Stick with the fresh stuff. I want you, I want you eating apples, things that grow, something that looks like you just went outside and you got it. Mm-hmm. You know, that looks like that. And that really helped me with the shopping to kind of get started. Because at the beginning, we're all very confused. What can I eat? And and it's not really what can I eat. We, we're, we're pretty much told stay away from this, stay away, stay away. So we're afraid of everything to eat. Yeah. And, and you mentioned that earlier. Don't look at it that way. Look at what you can eat. And they're really, that was the secret to me becoming happy eating food again. Uh, I, I loved eating. It was a big part of my life. Um, overeating probably is the right Mm -hmm. word there. Um, but now I know I can practically eat anything. It just comes down to portion control. And I don't see that as a diet to me. That's just choices. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat a a larger dinner tonight. Um, I'm not going to make my dinner. Maybe we're my wife's cooking, so it's not going to be as healthy. So now it means ah, I'm going to eat a little bit less at lunch. So I have those, that buffer, a little more room in my, in my allowances to eat whatever she's making. Uh, but it may be a bit higher in potassium, potato base and things like that. But I just kind of make choices. And that's kind of how I see my approach to food. It's not a diet, at least for me. 
It's just making choices, which is so much happier and easier and enjoyable when it comes to eating mm -hmm. your food. Now yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm going to catch up with some of these comments real quick. <laughs> I know. I'm watching my fly by too, James. I don't know how you do this, honestly, because um, these poor people that are trying to ask me questions. <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm watching them. I'm tracking them. I will, I will, let's see if we can grab some of the questions that have come up. So I know um, there's been some questions about creatinine. So I'll just say really quick that creatinine is related to your muscular, uh, your muscular health. This creatinine is not a nutritional side of things when it comes to CKD. So anything with creatinine is something that you want to be addressing inflammatory responses to. In that case, you can have inflammation coming from things like dietary related, like lactose or dairy, uh, gluten, even some certain animal products or soy, like James had mentioned. Um, that's individualized, but you really want to track back to what's causing your body inflammation. And that is impacting your kidneys, your creatinine, but creatinine directly. I get this question all the time about creatinine and nutrition, and they're not really related in, in a direct way so much as other labs like potassium and phosphorus, even BUN. So talk with your doctor about your creatinine and ask them about what's causing this to be elevated, what's causing this to increase, what's causing this to decrease. And our favorite question is why? Why is this happening? Uh, if you don't understand it, keep asking questions. They're you know, depending on your practitioner, they might get annoyed or they might welcome the questions, but either way, it's their job to explain it to you. So be sure that you get those responses and it has to be individualized. Your healthcare team will be able to answer that the best and anyone else, even James and I on here can only give some examples and ideas and comments about things, but we don't know your background. We don't know your health. We don't know those things. And honestly, even if you did share all of that with us legally, we cannot tell you. <laughs> Even from that standpoint, uh, we cannot give any advice or information for that. But creatinine is related to your kidney and more of your um, overall health. So keep that in mind when it comes to creatinine. And we've got, for those of you that are on YouTube, I'm sorry about the uh, <laughs> the person that's being a little bit um, naughty. I'm trying to log in and I'm, re I'm reporting them to YouTube. So hopefully they'll get them taken care of. They're getting worse than the last time. <laughs> oh man, it, you yeah. know it's, it's when people ruin a good thing, and it's like you're gonna you're gonna ruin this for everybody. Just be nice and don't be weird. Yeah. Well, the good um, thing is YouTube tracks everyone's IP addresses, and for those mm -hmm. that have larger channels, there's quite a bit that they will uh, do to protect you. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I had somebody comment. Okay. So for one example, I was talking about like increasing some like brown rice or something with the meal, again, adding something to the plate. Um, Gloria said, I don't like brown rice, but I eat black rice or black jazzberry rice, which I've seen. And I think that's good. Great antioxidants. That is another example of find what works for you. And it doesn't have to be the brown rice at all or quinoa. You could do farro, you could do teff, you could do amaranth, you could do butt week, you could do bulgur. I mean, you guys, I could go on and on about the options, but the point is, is that there are options, which is amazing. It's so great that we have so many options of things to eat that don't involve any animal products. Now, there's a few people asking about canned canned vegetables. Um, what are your recommendations for, for those if they are looking for canned vegetables? Um, I think canned vegetables are great. Personally speaking, we are in, actually, we just this past weekend had a hurricane warning. So we had to really kind of hunger down. And if we lost power, if we did not have access to some things, canned would be the go-to option for us in an emergency situation. So I think canned is a great thing to have on hand. It's really easy to cook with. If you can find low or no added salt, that is, in my opinion, a uh, gold standard when it comes to canned um, vegetables, for example. For fruits, canned or packed in water, not in juice. I mean, juice is okay, but still um, water would be nice. Uh, syrup, definitely no, because just like the vegetables had added sodium, mm -hmm. the fruit syrup has added sugar. Uh, so make sure that it doesn't, it's not packed in anything that has high salt or sugar content. 
And then if you can't get access to those things, that's okay. Not the end of the world. When you drain them, just make sure you rinse it really well. And that will pull off some of the extra mm, stuff that it's canned with. But I would be, um, I would be sitting on a lot of privilege if I said, you can't have any canned foods. So I do not feel like that's the case. And we absolutely can and should include canned foods. <laughs> yeah. And being here in Ohio, we of course have to have food in case there's a tornado and we lose power and, you know, can't refrigerate stuff. And I've got my can and that's exactly what my doctor said. Rinse it. Um, if I get stuff, don't use the juice that's in there. Mm -hmm. And they recommended to me none of the veggie or none of the uh, the fruits because those are just packed in a syrup that is just loaded with sugar. Uh, there yeah. Was a, there was another question. Oh, Geraldine had a good question here, and I hear this all the time on Facebook. People are worried about brown rice, or they they're they're not sure about brown rice. Is it okay? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that is an old renal diet rule. Very, very old, <laughs> circa 1994. Uh, it, it is not, and the reason I pulled 1994 out is because I just had somebody tell me that their doctor gave them a handout from 1994. And I was like, <laughs> that is how updated that, their information is. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, I know, terrifying. But uh, no, brown rice is really a good option. Whole grains are a really, really good option. If you are choosing the white, and okay, let me first say the thought that used to be behind this idea was that the whole grains were low, or I'm sorry, the white were lower in potassium and phosphorus, which the whole grains do have some, mostly it's phosphorus that's a concern not really potassium but the phosphorus that is in that whole grain is only absorbed by like 30 percent it is a very very lower so if even you do look up the phosphorus content of something like brown rice only do 30 percent of that number as the actual phosphorus amount that you would want to take into consideration so there are so many other benefits including the fiber that comes from whole grains and the fiber from the whole grain is going to help with good gut health, is going to help you go to the bathroom, and going to the bathroom, having a, a good bowel movement is also what helps eliminate phosphorus and potassium as well. So not only is that phosphorus in the whole grain um, not such a concern, but it's the other added benefits of those whole grains that are going to help you keep your numbers better controlled. And I've seen this so many times in the course in my with my private clients, all the time I've seen people that have uh, better, basically uh, feeling better and, and often better results. Yep. And and when you mentioned that 1994, uh, I don't think a lot of renal patients realize that um, right now there is so much progress being made on the renal diet that I believe it's yearly there's an update to the recommendation. So if you have something that's four years old, a document, it's got a date on it, nah, it, it, it mm. definitely has changed. And that data, it may be accurate, but it may not be. So that's why it's really good to work with a renal dietitian because that's their job is to stay up to date with all this and let you know, hey, this is, you know, we thought it was bad to have the brown rice, but now it's, it's, there's data. They've looked at it. It's good for you. Let's, let's add it in your diet and they can work with you on that. And we've got some, got some very good positive things. Jen is fab. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice. We've also had a lot of questions. I know we're at the top of the hour now are coming on to it. We had a lot of questions about beans and nuts. Um, what are your thoughts on that from a dietitian's point of view for a, a kidney patient? Well, I mean, to be honest, James, when you had talked about the shopping the perimeter thing, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, those poor beans and those nuts and those seeds that don't get any love. <laughs> My store, I mean, that's where they're at. <laughs> that's okay, where all the good so stuff yeah, is in too. mine, it's smack dab in the middle. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, so, and, and that's, that's the thing that I think some people think about when they think like shopping their perimeter is they're avoiding the whole grains and nuts and seeds. And those can absolutely be a part of a solid kidney friendly diet. Mm -hmm. It still comes back to how much is going to be 
best utilized by your body and taken care of by your kidneys. So nuts and seeds are higher in phosphorus, higher in potassium. Again, it's natural or organic phosphorus, but they're higher. So it is still something to keep in mind. And if your numbers do trend higher, you really want to be careful with how much of that you're having. So, um, it's, but, but there's so many good benefits to nuts and yep. I think it's really, really, uh, something to include, especially if it's just something like a little, a, a snack or a garnish for a salad, even tossing with some rice, like a pilaf to give it a little crunch. I mean, toasted almonds on top of a stir fry. There's tons of different options. And I really do think of, uh, nuts and seeds as more of like a garnish for a meal, you know, oatmeal, yep. a little sprinkle of nuts on top. There's, there's tons of ways using nut butter blended into a smooth. Oh my gosh, you guys, I can go on and on about and this. And it's funny, I'm kind of smiling because just at arm's length, I, this is, this is where I work. I sit at this desk all day. I got to get up throughout the day and move because it's working from home. I, this bag lasts me forever. I have a bag, Thai curry uh-huh. cashews. Now, I, I, cashews are really um, treating myself. I don't eat cashews usually. I prefer almonds and pecans because they have more um, uh, fiber in them. But I've, I hated spicy stuff, but now I absolutely love spicy stuff because it, makes me slow down and I eat less, but I still enjoy it. It's like, holy cow, it's it's the thing slapping my hand when I'm going back for too much. <laughs> it's like, nope, nope, yeah. nope. <laughs> it's great to add spice. And some people, you know, you all have different tolerances, but it is a really great way to add flavor without adding salt. So I think that's really great. And, um, you know, to kind of think back to even the beginning of our conversation about the meat substitutes, take a look and maybe compare some of those meat substitutes, the original versus a spicy version yeah. and see if there's any changes with the sodium on those. I can't say for sure, you know, what there would be, but take a look and see what's at your store and what you have available. All right. So <laughs> we've got some funny comments in here. People love the nuts. <laughs> yeah. I also Good. will add them to my salad. I will crush them up. I'm assuming there probably is a tool I could use. I don't know, and I don't have one. Um, I just put them in a little bag. I kind of measure it out, and I mm-hmm. zip it and crush them up. My kids have fun getting to hammer it and crush it up. And I sprinkle in the salad. gives a little crunch. adds a little flavor. Today, I was like, you know, some sunflower seeds. I'm just going to add a little bit of sunflower seeds. They're good in fiber. And I mm-hmm. added some sunflower seeds. And, boy, it just really made that, that salad. I was... I was in, when I was eating it, Jen, I was like, holy cow, I don't remember how I made this. This is really good. (laughs) Isn't that the worst when you throw something together? You're like, man, I should have took notes. Yeah. And it had a lot of cabbage because I love cabbage. I eat cabbage almost every day. And someone said, can I eat cabbage every day? Um, I, I find it very easy to work cabbage into my meals. I like the crunch it adds if I'm eating. You know, I, I eat it uncooked. I eat it cooked. I also eat um, sauerkraut, which I believe mm-hmm. is made from it. Used to never eat that until I learned about gut health. And I'm like, okay, I need some I need some sauerkraut. Now I like it. Um, but we are coming up at the top of the hour, and I don't want to keep you too long. But I do want to let people know before we, before we start wrapping things up, starting the first, which is this Saturday, I believe. I will be streaming live every day of the week from the 1st through the 7th. So seven days, seven days of live streaming. I got different people each night, two days. There's doctors. Uh, We've got Jen. I've got um, John Vito, author of Cooking for Your Kidneys. Um, I also am trying to finalize some dates from somebody who used to work in the West Wing who can talk about health care and how we, uh, or things that are important to kidney patients with health care. Um, lots of great topics coming up next week. So I'm hoping you guys will join in with those conversations. Um, I'm gonna try to throw in a few more questions if you don't mind, Jen, that, I, that I'm yeah, seeing yeah, in here, because it. it's always great to get the, some of the questions answered. Oh, mm-hmm. here's how I start a lot of my mornings off. Rima's asking, is oatmeal okay? I love oatmeal. I think it is a great way to start your day. 
You can do it cold, you can do it hot, you can blend it into a smoothie. There are so many ways to use oatmeal. It has a lot of fiber and fiber helps us with a lot of things. So absolutely you can and if you like it, you should be having oatmeal. Yes, I eat oatmeal quite often and I will sprinkle a bit of cinnamon in there. First of all, it adds great flavor and it's an anti-inflammatory and I've chopped up, diced up apples. I see I'm getting some mm -hmm. skills. I'm watching your videos. I'm not cutting as fast as you. I'll <laughs> dice up apples and I put those in the oatmeal after I've made it and I just kind of bury them in there. Then I put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and they become so soft and oh, I'm becoming a microwave chef. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. Microwave is a great tool to have. But I love oatmeal. Oh, and Victoria says, oatmeal with nuts? Yes, I even yeah. use um, um, the big giant ones, walnuts. I chop up walnuts and add those. Chop them up really, really fine, those ones. I mm -hmm. crush them a bunch. Um, I'm doing it so wrong. You know, I'm out in the counter trying not to break the counter, putting them in a baggie, and I'm using a sideways meat thingy with all the little spikes mm -hmm. on it. The meat mallet, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm just smashing it. Hey, if it works. If, if a chef could see me in my kitchen trying to make a meal, they'd be like, no, what are you doing? Oh, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I don't have a cutting board or anything like that. I'm like, ah, oh, this is like a stone. I think I can hit oh, okay. stuff real yeah, hard no, on it. a cutting it. board would be pretty important. <laughs> Oh yeah, someone said oatmeal, cinnamon, apples, almost daily yum. Hey, very good there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, cinnamon and nutmeg and apples. Ah. Very good one there. Oh, yeah, there's so many things you can do just by mixing those flavors up. All right, um, I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. Lots of stuff in here, holy cow. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try to, if I have answers for some of them, uh, post them on wherever I can find them. We're now in multiple Facebook groups, so the, the comments are all over the place um, in different groups, plus on YouTube, and I'll try to see if I can find some of these questions people have asked, a few people have asked for certain links and stuff. I'll, I'll find the links, and if I can, reply to your comments so you have those there. Um, there's lots of links in the description of this video. Soon. When we go live, I, I, there's not many links in the description, but soon I'll be adding all sorts of cool descriptions. For more information, if you haven't followed Jen's Facebook page, Plant Powered Kidneys, go ahead and follow it. It's free and there's great information. And please help spread the information, share these videos on Facebook, share them you know, wherever you can on social media so that other people can follow them um, and see them just to give them some inspiration, some hope. We're not. You know, we're not giving you exactly what to do, but we're helping you find the right questions and hopefully not be as worried or fearful or self-restricting on the foods that you can eat. I was stage five. Doctor said I had zero chance of getting better. I asked her, I said, what's the chance? Doc, I know you can't promise anything. I won't tell anybody. Tell me, how many people have you seen? And she wouldn't give me a number. She said, there's no chance. Your GFR 13 is the best you're gonna do. As soon as you're out of the ICU, it's gonna start going back down and you're gonna get back to where you were when you came in here. I have not, I have gone up by making smart choices, working with the renal dietitian, working with my healthcare team. Uh, and we're gonna talk a lot about that next in the Kidney Health Week, the August the 1st through the 7th. And is that our topic, Jen, next week? That is talking i think it's talking with your doctor um our that's in two weeks our that's next topic weeks. is looking at labs so we're talking Ooh. about the kidney labs to track yes that is next tuesdays and someone asked james what yep. time are the shows next tuesday most of them will be the same time 6 p.m eastern but a few of those some of the the doctors theirs are at two o'clock 2 p.m eastern but if you go to dadv dadvicetv.com, the homepage, scroll down, I've got the schedule, who will be there, and the times that have been nailed down so you can know, hey, let me check in and participate live. And there will be some giveaways next week. I say next week, but it starts this Saturday. We'll be giving away some stuff. We've got, um, oh, I can't believe I don't have it at arm's reach. We've got uh, Pro Renal Plus D, the amazing people behind the renal multivitamin. There we go. 
they're going to give away some month supplies of that. Um, I use that. That helps me supplement what I don't exactly get enough of through my diet because I got to watch my numbers and I'm supposed to be watching my weight. I'm just watching it go up. I got to stop that part. <laughs> But I want to thank everyone for being here and Jen and I will see you next Tuesday and I will see many of you this coming Saturday when I kick off Dadvice TV's Kidney Health Week. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everyone.